What is up, Steeples? We are here with the Rosetta Primer and everything you need to know about draft. I've been doing a ton of drafts leading up to this so that I can provide you guys with the best knowledge I possibly can so that you can win a gold foil at your pro quest or just win your local armory to get that gold foil. We do have some draft rankings. This, however, is only on our Patreon. So if you become a Patreon subscriber, you will have access to our draft rankings. I'm going to have draft recordings and I'll offer even some one-on-one -on -one draft advice if you have any questions. So uh, please feel free to uh, subscribe to our Patreon and support us. We appreciate that. Now let's talk about the heroes of Rosetta. So we have uh, four of them. We have Florian. He's our Earth Rune Blade. He's going to be coming in with a lot of like three for seven. So some big earthy attacks, even some big Rune Blade attacks in there. Uh, he also has like an OTK sort of package where you can get a ton of rune chance and because that there is no arcane barrier in this set uh, coming out with like eight rune chance and an eight power attack uh, can be a sort of OTK style that you would see in limited uh, and then he can also very much fatigue your uh, your opponent he is built for the long game and can certainly excel in doing so. Verdance is our Earth Wizard. Because she is Earth, she can also do the three four sevens. But she, being a wizard, can put out arcane damage through the effects of wizard spells. Um, and she can also be fatiguey as well, especially when facing against lightning heroes. Aurora is our lightning rune blade. Uh, she looks to go wide. Her ability helps with this. Her weapon helps with this. Um, and then just her card pool helps with this. Uh, she also has a very aggressive play style as she is going super wide. And then she also has quite a bit of on hits uh, or some ability effects. And then finally, we have Asilio, our lightning wizard, also looking to go wide with the lightning involved, uh, but with the wizard dealing some arcane damage, uh, looking to use the staff to be able to amp that arcane damage. Now, there is secret heroes to this set that no one's talking about and everyone should be. I think everyone kind of knows about one of them, but the one I don't think people really think is a, a deal is Viscerai. And what I mean by Viscera is that you can draft a mono rune blade deck and you can have success with it. All right, the rune blade cards have a great combination of cards that just synergize so well with each other. And on top of that, you are able to make a ton of rune chance uh, in order to allow the synergy to work very, very well. Um, so the Viscera is very much a real hero that is a little bit of a secret hero um, and then we have Kano which is just drafting only wizard cards and allows you to have some tall arcane damage but also kind of allows you to go wide if your arcane damage as well uh, if you meet some surge effects so I think a lot of people kind of figured out that yeah you can go mono wizard with Kano but you can also very very much go mono rune blade and have a great game so let's get into some of the things to know for this set as we just saw there are six heroes to choose and this is the one I put first because I think this is the most crucial thing to know about drafting Rosetta. There are six heroes you can choose from, so you do not have to get locked in immediately. You can stay open in this draft, and you can, you know, even if you're having a bad earth pool, but your rune blade pool is good, there's a viscerite for you. Same thing for the wizards. Um, or if you just have a really good earth pool, then you can, you know, just kind of see how it goes and choose between Verdance and Florian. Same thing for lightning. So there is six different heroes that can make it where you can draft in six different ways. And so it is a very, very open draft. Do not feel forced to force a hero, but instead let a hero come to you. Uh, picking a talent is for pack one and then picking your heroes for pack two. Uh, this Kano and Viscerai are the exception here because they have no talents. They are just purely a class hero. But when we are talking about our earth heroes and our lightning heroes, you generally do want to try to pick your 
talent in pack one by drafting a lot of earth or drafting a lot of lightning and then picking which side you want to go to in pack two ready you want to be aurora or celio or verdance or florian and then arcane prevention or life gain is a must the reason is is because there is no arcane barrier there is no way to pitch to prevent arcane instead you have to counter direct arcane damage by gaining more life or having some sort of damage prevention effects which there are a few uh, this is particularly important when you're going against wizards as they will just be able to end games without you really having a say in the matter so having arcane prevention and life gain is a must to combat that going first is actually beneficial in most cases uh that's totally opposite than like 90 percent of games in limited but going first here actually can be uh, something that works to your advantage particularly if you're a wizard get some arcane damage in uh, but even like aurora she likes to set up an embodiment of lightning uh going first so that's very good for her uh it's not always the rule i would say with florian the kind of depending on the deck i have i wouldn't mind going second so i can maybe hopefully block with some earth cards going first uh or you know with my opponent attacking first i should say um but there, most of the time, going first is actually more beneficial than going second. Um, and then these games are polarizing in the fact that you either have very, very short games that won't go past turn five, or you have very long games where you're going to second and even third cycle, and then you are winning because you have fatigue. So uh, it all depends on what hero you're playing and what hero you chose it will depend on how long or short your games are going to be. All right, let's start with Florian. All right, as mentioned before, this is our Earth Runeblade hero. So we are going to draft Decompose early and often. All right, and this is because he is our Earth hero and we need at least four to function. All right, Decompose really helps make Florian work. It does turn on his ability, which is a plus, but it also just turns on a lot of Earth cards as well as equipments. We want to focus on Earth more than we focus on Runeblade. Earth is a very powerful talent, especially if it synergizes within itself. So we, when building a Florian deck, his playstyle will benefit you more and get you farther if you are more Earthy than you are Runeblade. He is a second cycle hero, meaning that he is strongest in the second cycle. You can pitch reds to go to the second cycle, make him even stronger, but because he has a great weapon to move into the second cycle and make good use of blues as well as good use of rune chance in the second cycle so he loves being in the second cycle and because he can block fairly well he can usually get there all right let's look at a deck that i was able to go 3-0 with with florian all right so as you can see here didn't get a ton of equipment unfortunately but we did get two of the best equipments for florian uh, Helm is very good and Runehold Release is very good. All right, Well Grounded would have been another very good Earth uh, equipment, the boots that is, as it does prevent two and that does help us against wizards, uh, but just didn't see it. All right, so now we look. So Arcade Seeds and Life, this is a bomb. We like this card a lot for Florian. Uh, we also have Arcane Polarity Red to combat any sort of wizards. And then we got a good amount of just big attacks here. So we got a red Autumn's Touch, a red Blossoming Decay, uh, even a red Fruits of the Forest. We have two Blossoming Decays and two Cadaverous Tillings and a Summer's Fall, uh, ending up with five Decompose. Uh, this is good because this is about how many we need. Now you can see here that I drafted some blue Cadaverous Tillings. And that is because when you are building an Earth Hero, whether you are Florian or Verdance, it is super, super important to get enough Decompose to make this hero work. So yes, blue Cadaverous Tilling will be drafted. I mean, even a blue Blossoming Decay, which is probably the worst of the decomposed to draft as far as in blue and whatnot, but still a necessary thing to do if you are going to turn online. And that is super important because as you see here, we have two red strength of four seasons and four blues, which is great in the late game because it come in for six. Uh, that is what we have here. So by making sure we hit decompose, we turn these cards online. We make our helmet a little bit better. Uh, and then we even allow fertile ground to gain us five life, which at that point becomes a bomb. All right. Uh, I got some fruits of the forest to have some life gain. This also combats 
uh, wizard, so that's also very good. Uh, Tip Photon Bulletproof is a bomb as well. Uh, but you can see my Runeblade cards aren't really focused on here. Like, I got a red Hocus Pocus. Okay. It's not the best. Uh, I got some Field of Fire Spirits. That's nice. But, like, for my Runeblade cards, they're mostly blues. Uh, they're blue block threes. So we do like them for that reason. Um, and I do actually like Sigil of Deadwood because, again, in the late game, this turns on my sword for four and then makes me two rune chance and turns on my sword for four so we like that a lot so this is a deck that went 3-0 against faced a mirror and it beat two acilios and the acilios we were able to beat because of how much life gain we had okay let's get back into the presentation some pros about drafting florian uh, you get earth synergy for big attacks life gain in defense all right we saw strength of the four seasons we saw fertile ground and then even our helmet gets a little bit better when we have earth synergy uh, you have split damage this is particularly true in the end whenever you're playing stuff that makes rune chance uh, rune chance in physical it gives you split damage so it makes it harder for your opponent to be able to block out and then you can fatigue wizards and lightning heroes just by having efficient blocks and coming in with big damage those three for seven sort of stuff two for eights even with strength of the four seasons this stuff is just how you force your opponents to give you a couple cards out of their hand and then you still can block with two cards so you work best with florian with two cards some of the cons you're relying on decompose you do need to draft at least four decomposed in order to feel like you have a good earth deck so you are very reliant on decompose there is little rune chant creation uh that is definitely true uh, you will see most of your rune chant creation with your blues so you will see it mostly in the second cycle and then you can be out damaged by wizards in the early game and the reason why is if you do not decompose quick enough then you will not have your big attacks coming in and threatening them your life gain might not be online like with fertile ground um, and then your defense if you're well grounded for your boots uh, won't be online so if wizards can kill you before you can become online then you can have a very very rough time into them so let's talk about florian's matchups all right, so in the mirror, you're looking to preserve cards by swinging blade. Uh, pitch one to two red big attacks for the second cycle so that when you hit that second cycle, you're coming in big, and hopefully that will either change the tempo or end the game outright. Against Verdance, you want to have life gain and three for sevens because this will fatigue her. Uh, you are looking to just outvalue her wizard attacks by just getting a lot of life and is still forcing her to block quite often uh, with big attacks on your own uh, and then here it says block attacks often put two cards in front of their big attack uh, that's what you want to do try not to be too risky with it only because she has arcane damage that can punish you in the end aurora you want to block two play two as mentioned before florian is a very good two card hero he only needs two cards to come in with a good attack so use the other two to block aurora um, block efficiently and pressure with big attacks uh, this is how you can be aurora to just basically outvalue her attacks is what you're looking to do Acilio, uh, life gain and three for sevens will fatigue her or fatigue it, him. I don't know, it's a robot. Uh, but uh, you will, just like with Verdance, you'll be able to fatigue, but actually, even quicker with this one because they won't be able to attack you as um, for as much as like Verdance could. Uh, but here, you definitely, definitely want to block any sort of attack that comes your way. All right, now with Viscerai, you're going to try to be as aggressive as possible with attacks. And I won't lie, this is a very hard matchup. Luckily, as of now, maybe this changes, but not a lot of people are drafting Viscerai or a Viscerai type style deck. So you can usually avoid this matchup. But the reason why this is not a great matchup is that Viscerai's three to four card hand is going to be better than your two to four card hand. Um, he's just going to be able to use up every single attack uh, or every single card on you where oftentimes you'll have if you have a four card hand you'll only really be able to use two of those cards 
Okay, and then Kano, this one's also a very tough one. Try to decompose and get online as soon as possible and then have as much life gain as you possibly can. Fruits of the Harvest is good for that. Arcane Polarity, just try to have enough life gain to keep you alive until you can reach your four earth cards in your banish zone to decompose and then you can start having fertile ground and having well grounded and stuff like that to keep yourself alive and to kill kato maybe even fatigue all right aurora so aurora you're going to be drafting red lightning as much as possible uh rather it is a go again lightning like fry lightning surge to uh, be able to put into your arsenal to give go again um or if it's like electrostatic discharge the reason why you want red lightning is because this turns on her ability this turns on her blade uh, and it doesn't even necessarily have to have go again because you, your goal with her is to make an embodiment of lightning every turn or every other turn uh our effects are good here too uh stuff like hit the high note rager swarm uh these are things that work great when you have an aura out that you can instant speed play to give them their bonus effect you want to focus on lightning more than room blade just like with the uh with florian um, lightning is what's going to turn on aurora's ability what's going to turn on her blade so it is more important to stock up on lightning cards than room blade cards when drafting aurora and then you're going to look to have on and off turns when you're playing her uh, she is a set up hero she can set up quite nice uh, if you have something like a burn up shock don't play that immediately try to arsenal that card so that you can come in with four to five attacks even with that card probably not coming to four to five attacks but you can probably come in with three to four attacks and if you can't get damage through then you will at least take their hand away and that's what you're looking to do when you have these big setup turns all right let's look at a 3-0 aurora deck that we have all right so here we did get a good amount of equipment here so that's always good uh arcane cussing works very well blood torn bodies so that's why we take that uh, again arcane polarity cannot stress how good this card is we did get a burn up shock here this is a absolute bomb for aurora so very much needed very good uh arcanic spike is kind of just like a little ender for us really uh, I, I like him in blue quite a bit it's not guaranteed that you're going to deal arcane with her um, so keep that in mind when you're looking at rune blade cards uh, as you can see here, I got three electrostatic discharges. This definitely helps to allow the blade to turn on so I can attack with the blade and then it will pump up my next attack that is cost one or less. Uh, we do have one of the endless fine spirit. You can play tall attacks. It's not the worst thing in Aurora, to be honest. You can still do that. Uh, we got some red heavens claws. We got these red hit the high notes again. If you played or created aura, it gets plus two, so it becomes a one for six. That's why we like this card a lot. Uh, Lightning Surge we have. We have red and blue. Rune Rager Swarm. Get an aura, gives it go again. We like that. Second Strike works pretty well as well. And we do have some Trip the Light Fantastics. This is to stop Wizard from having their surge effects happen. Uh, I highly recommend these cards. And then I didn't get a red fry, but I did get a yellow fry, and that's sometimes just good enough. I would, I'm fine playing yellows. Probably not blues, but definitely yellows. Lightning forms, same deal. Red and yellows are fine with me. I think this card's very good. Uh, if it hits, we don't even have to activate our hero's ability, so I like that a lot. And then, just like Fiendless Fighting Spirit, this is just a big attack that we can end on, and then we have some blues that we can work with as well. So, uh, we want to have a healthy amount of blues. I had eight here. That usually allows you to have one blue a hand, uh, which then allows you to play out your attacks and then use the extra resources to use her ability. All right, let's get back to the slide. So, some pros of drafting Aurora. Uh, you keep going wide with the ability so she is the most consistent with going aggressive and going wide because of her ability uh, she has very very explosive turns that is for damn sure uh, you can have a little bit of, like i said with the on off turns you can have uh, dud like turns where you only swing blade in one attack that can happen, but usually that is followed with using her ability to have an environment lightning so that next turn you have a four to five uh, attack turn. 
and then she does make the best use of these four to five card hands which is uh, very good particularly into wizards where you can't actually block any sort of arcane damage so you're kept you're left with your four to five card hand but you can push those four to five cards to really hurt those wizards all right, some of the cons is you need at least one blue to function for your hand, so you could get cloggy hands. Um, but if you draft enough blues, this hopefully mitigates that. Uh, you must play a lightning card every turn. That's pretty essential. Again, focus on lightning to help mitigate this. And then you can be fatigued through life gain, particularly when we talk about with like Florian. Uh, yeah, Florian will will be able to fight you and then gain life at the end, and that's going to make it where he's has a slight advantage into that second cycle. All right, let's start about the matchup. So Florian, try to split your damage. The reason why you want to try to do this, um, if it's possible, you might not be able to, but if it's absolutely possible. Um, Splitting the damage through like rune chance or just through some effects can be hard for Florian to deal with, so it allows you to get more of a gap on him. So that if he is to gain any sort of life, it wouldn't be like just game over at that point. Uh, and then look to have on off turns, set up your turns so that you have explosive turns and you have mediocre turns. Explosive turn, mediocre turns. This kid, this uh, fluctuation um, can really mess with uh, Florian but uh, it all kind of depends on where you're at in the game, I think, with this matchup. It's a hard one. This one's a hard one. Uh, Verdance. You want to be super, super aggressive. Here, I also have the on and off turns. You're going against Earth, so you want to try to get explosive on them. Uh, I do like this matchup slightly better just because they tend to sometimes just block out and then come in with one wizard spell. And that's not really threatening, but three damage on you. And so therefore you can keep coming at them. Uh, if, if they're playing more of a wizard against you, that's a better time for you. In the mirror, this is one of the few times I actually like going second. Although I've had a lot of people go first. I think, you know, it's kind of preference at this point. Uh, but the players have the better pop-off turns win. So try to set that up. Try to look to make that happen. All right, against Acilio, uh, you can block here and feel pretty fine with it. Acilio really looks to spread their damage. So if you block the physical, take the arcane and send your physical, uh, that should typically do it. Obviously, there'll be turns where you take a little bit of physical damage because maybe you're about to have a pop-off or explosion type turn, um, and that's fine too. If you can put Acilio on the back foot, it's very hard for them to get out of it. All right, against Viserai, same plan as Florian. This is also kind of a tough matchup just because they have a lot of combinations um, to work with. You do too, so it's kind of depending on like who's more consistent. Can you do a consistent on-off turn um, or can they be more consistent with their combinations? And then Kano, uh, damage prevention is super, super huge um, and be as aggressive as possible. You actually have a fairly decent matchup in this only because, as we mentioned before, your five, four to five card hands, you can make work very well. So uh, Kano can have some tough time being able to survive enough, long enough to be able to kill you with his arcane damage. Now let's get into Viserai, one of the secret heroes, the last rune blade that we have. All right, so draft if good rune blade cards are presented but no talent cards are uh, for example if you find in your draft that the earth cards are depleted and the lightning cards that are passed to you are like blues but you've been getting but you've been seeing some good rune blade cards all right start drafting those rune blade cards if it continues to go in that trend where the lightning cards aren't great and there's little to no earth cards you might be drafting Viscerai, and that's perfectly fine because that is your lane and you found it and you can stay in it. Uh, you want to focus on rune chant creation, so you're going to be focusing on stuff like Oath of the Arc Knight, Meet and Greet, uh, anything that will create you some rune chants as that is going to allow for your combination turns to work. And then your equipment for Viscerai is valued very highly because they do help turn on your combination turns. All right, let's look at a 3-0 Viscerai deck. All right, now, I, one thing I don't think I've mentioned yet is when I say Viscerai, you're playing Florian because of the weapon. All right, you could play Aurora, but this weapon works so much better as Viscerai. 
than Starfall would. So you're going to be playing Florian, but as you can see here, you're going to be playing very little Earth cards. I have two, okay? All right, so let's look at this Florian deck, or this Visray deck. So I didn't get the chest piece. I did get the arm stone. That's going to help set up a lot of turns, which is really nice. Arcane Cussing, even without the chest piece, when you're talking about a Visceride deck, is very good because this is just presenting some on-hit effects that is going to force your opponent to put more cards out to block, um, as well as if we get this to trigger, then we are getting some uh, our, some rune chance, which helps turn on our turn. It helps turn on Arcanic Spikes, which is really nice. Condemn the Slaughter works very well with Arcane Cussing. Consuming Volition works very well with Rune Chance. You can see here, like, we're all just super synergized here. This is just a very good generic bomb. So we got that. Deadwood Dirge, obviously, is the combo with Arcane Cussing. You sacrifice your Arcane Cussing, creating three Rune Chance. That's very nice. You'll never have Florian's ability be turned on, so you'll only get the amount of Rune Chance that is presented. So you'll only ever get three. But that's okay. You will, you're fine with that. Hit the high note is a very good card because it works with creating your rune chance since those are auras. If you pair, if you pitch a blue, you play an O for the Arc Knight, giving plus three and making a rune chant, and then with that last remaining resource play, hit the high note. You are coming in for one arcane damage and nine physical, and that is a three card nine. So that's not bad at all, especially since it was split up in damage uh hocus pocus is fine meet and greet is very good unfortunately only got one with this deck but this card is very good in this style of deck uh so is rune rager swarm it allows you to go a little wider and then the earth cards i have you can see here is life gain to help counter some wizard effects as well as digital sanctuary for that same reason so uh this deck is actually the most fun i've had uh so i do like this right for that reason all right let's move on all right so some pros with drafting viscerai uh you're generally going to be open um talents are definitely more uh lucrative and more people are going to want them especially in the pack one and it makes sense because if you get a good earth synergy deck you're going to have what feels like a little miniature blitz sack same with lightning uh which tends to mean that the talent cards tend to be open and especially when we look at the rune blade cards they're probably the least drafted so you could be the one of viscerite in your draft and it wouldn't be it'd actually be pretty normal i think uh you get the best combination of cards meaning your cards synergize with each other quite a bit um with like without having setup basically with earth you need to decompose with lightning you need some go again here you just need some rune chance and a lot of your cards help you with that and then you get a pretty consistent split damage. I think when I played that Fisheride deck, I think there's every turn, but maybe one in the, out of my entire like rounds, um, I had a rune chant every single turn. So you get consistent split damage, which is always nice. Uh, the cons is you are very very weak to arcane damage you are not you are earth so you do have fruits of the harvest you do have sigil sanctuary uh, you have a little bit of life gain but you do not have the earth boots fertile harvest is never going to be or fertile grounds or fertile harvest anyways uh, that card's never going to be good for you uh, so you you have less life gain you need to get arcane polarities and fruits of the forest to be able to combat that uh, you are relying on rune chant creation, so you need to make sure you can do that. You can mitigate that by drafting uh, Visray fairly early. will help with that a lot. And that's really it. I mean, honestly, that's really all the cons. All right, let's talk about matchups. Okay, so against Florian, looked at big rune chant turns uh, late game, too. Um, you know, if you got a block with one or two cards and send two to three in the uh to until you get to the second cycle until you have like the big rune chant the, what i mean by big rune chant by the way is i mean like your arcane cussing deadwood dirge all right like this those are game enders especially with your blade at the end uh that's what you're really looking to do uh so that's what you're looking to set up against florian uh this is actually more, you're more favored just because you have a better combination of cards um but it can still be a pretty tough matchup can get down to fatigue so it's i think you know it's a it's a pretty 50 50. 
Uh, Verdant, you're going to do the same as Florian, but here you definitely need life gain. You're a little bit more worried just because of the direct arcane damage. Aurora, keep rune chant production uh, constant to outvalue, uh, meaning that your you know three card hands is better than her uh, three card hand. So make sure that you are allowing yourself to um, race with her as far as value within like adding up all the pluses to your attacks, all the rune chant damage, and if it adds up to be better, which most times it will, then look to block optimally but minimally at the same time. Acilio, you're going to play as normal. You're just going to play your Viscerai self, and you will be fine as long as you gain some life. That's what you need to do. All right, in the mirror, uh, just like with like Aurora, try to have some on and off turns. Maybe you can like set up some uh, some bigger combinations uh, with like Rune Rager Swarm to like go again. It, you know, the mirror is always going to be 50-50. It kind of depends on who has the better combinations throughout the turns. And then Kano, uh, send your hand every turn. Um, you're going to need life gain here, but you actually are a little bit favored here just because uh, you can make work of your three to four card hands very well. Uh, maybe not as good as Aurora, but you do have a good amount as long as you have life gain. If you don't have life gain, you're going to lose to the Wizards every time, so make sure you get life gain. All right, now on to Verdance. All right, so our first Wizard. So you're gonna, just like with Florian, she is an Earth hero, so you're gonna draft Decompose early and often, um, and then Life Gain cards next, and then Wizard cards. So, uh, <laughs> Life Gain card next and Wizard card next. I should have said Life Gain and Wizard card next, but uh, yeah, make sure you get your Decompose first. Focus on that first. After you have enough Decompose, or you're not seeing any more Decompose, that's when you can go after your Life Gain or your Wizard cards. That's what you're look how you're looking to draft her. Uh, you're going to play a 3 for 7 game plan because you are Earth and you do got good 3 for 7s. And when I, when I say 3 for 7s, I'm talking like it costs 3 and you're presenting 7 attack. That's what I mean by 3 for 7. Uh, you're going to do that for the first half and you're going to have life gain and wizard spells in the second half is what it should say. I think I just stopped. Uh, but that is what you should have in the second half. Uh, that is because by the time that you get to the second half of your deck, you should, with all your decomposed, be online so your life gain is providing some arcane damage as well. Uh, okay, you're going to combat fatigue with drafting cards like Perennial Aether Bloom uh, because fatigue is something you do have to worry about. Uh, when you play Perennial Aether Bloom, make sure you are surging it so that it can go back into your deck. That is what you're going to look to do because your wizard spells are going to look to close out fatigue matchups. All right, let's look at a 3-0 Verdant stack. All right, so we have a full suite of equipment. We did very, very well in our equipment range, getting the boots, getting the gloves, the helmet, and this is probably her best chest piece as she doesn't really run sigils for the wizard chest piece. All right, let's look at our decompose. We have one, two, three, four we got a red cadaver ceiling five with the yellow summers fall so it looks like we got five here as well like i said before four is about the minimum you want anything above four is going to make things a lot easier so having five five felt really good uh we have uh, some aether quickening so we have some you know big arcane spells um, as well as photon splicings as well and then we have some zero four threes and these are really good too because what Verdance allows you to do is be able to block the three cards and just send in a zero for three and that's pretty nice That's her wizard side. We have a lot of trailblazing aethers too And if you pair that up with her staff to you know pitch An earth card to be able to give it the surge or just a blue card really Then we can play out another arcane spell so we can go pretty wide with our arcane as well uh, but we do have just some good earth card and you know some just uh, solid attacks as well so that's what we're really looking to do some looking to do some big attacks in the beginning and then finish up with wizard uh, spells in the end and that's how we play verdance uh, which we were able to beat the mirror and then two auroras all right let's get in to the pros and cons all right so pros uh earth synergy Again, for the big attacks, life gain and defense, just like with Florian. 
Uh, you're gonna split damage here as well, uh, especially in the after you turned on. That's really where you do the most of your arcane damage, um, which is great. And then you can fatigue lightning and wizard heroes in this way uh, by gaining life. Uh, that's that is how you do that. All right, the cons. You are reliant on decompose yet again. You do need to have at least four decompose to be a, a solid deck. Um, and when I say four decompose, you need to play each decompose, at least until you turn online. So if you are stuck with a blue blossoming decay, that's a bad decompose card, but you need to take that off turn to play it in order to turn online, um, especially in the certain matchups where they're gonna try to out aggro you. Uh, she can be fatigued, especially by Florian. I think that's one of her biggest things, but Viscera can get her too. And then she can actually be out damaged by Kano and Viscera. Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, Kano can just kill her with arcing damage before she turns online, just like with Florian, uh, before her fertile grounds can gain her life and before her well grounded can be activated. All right, let's look at the matchups here. So against Florian, you wanna focus on arcane damage. This is the best way to combat fatigue. Um, you're going to look to make best use of your perennial eight to blooms, arcane damage spells like that, so that you can get around, cause he does block very well, so you can get around him blocking you. Uh, in the mirror, uh, generally whoever turns on first has the better odds of winning that game. Um, and then here, life gain is very big because it is a wizard matchup you're going against. In Aurora, you're going to look to outvalue them with your uh, big attacks and then blocking very efficiently as well. You can use your staff as well as uh, to get some embodiment of earth effects so that your wizard spells can block a little bit better. Uh, and then your life gain helps to move the match in your favor because it just they only have so much damage they can constant like consistently provide against you so uh, by gaining life you really put it out of reach for them sometimes acilio life gain and blocking you can actually just fatigue of acilio so make sure you do want to try to turn on pretty quick um but yeah that's what you're looking to do there uh viscera same as florian just try to maximize on your staff value uh the reason is is because if you get that embodiment of earth and then you can block a meet and greet with uh one card to prevent them from making an, a rune chant great you'll that's 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 what you need to do so that's why you like that uh kano tr try to get as much life gain as possible uh which you know sometimes you need to turn on as quick as possible to enable boots and fertile ground so that's how you you can beat kano all right Asilio. You're going to draft a mixture of Gogan and Arcane Damage. Asilio is looking to have explosive turns as well. Uh, sigils are a big, big plus here, particularly Sigil of Lightning. That's one of the best sigils for him, other than his specialization. Uh, but you'll take any sigils sometimes. Uh, and then you can make use of bad instances using his ability. So if you are kind of having like a kind of a dud draft, maybe you shifted to Asilio a little later than, um, than what felt comfortable. Your cards like blue counter blessings or yellow brush off, you can just discard those to get a new card. So uh, really not the worst. All right, let's look at a, a Celio deck. All right, this one actually went 4-0 because this was actually at a local armory of mine. So we actually had four rounds, uh, but I'd be a Florian Verdance and two Asilios. Uh, we had two Comet Storms here, which is huge. Acilio does get underdrafted sometimes, so getting past one of these isn't really all that odd. Um, I was able to get two, which is really, really good. Had a decent amount of arcane uh, spells here, but also a decent amount of lightning. All right, we have three Sigil Lightnings. Very, very big. Get our Sigils up. We have one Flash. This allows us to play two Wizard spells at once. Or just, you know, another attack that might not have Gogan on its own. Like Flittering Charge doesn't have Gogan on its own. However, if we flash out a Sigil Lightning, it will have Gogan. So that's why we do like Flittering Charge with Asilio. Fry is a huge, huge like benefit 
um, etchings of Arcana, very big card with Facilio. Uh, I only had yellows and blues, but those were still good enough so I can bring back either Sigil of Forethought or Sigil of Lightnings. And then just, yeah, like a little Lightning Surge here. Just basically what you're looking to do is combine a lot of Lightning cards to start the turn and then finish the turn with a, a, a big Arcane card. So maybe you come in with a Fry uh, and then play a Sigil Lightning out and then use your staff to amp up and then finish the turn with like a arcane twinning and so then arcane twinning comes in for five damage five arcane damage which is really good because they've had to at least put three block in front of your fry and now they're taking five so it's very very good there all right and then we do have a bit of life gain and a bit of damage prevention for the wizard matchups okay let's get back to the slides here all right, so the pros, uh, you're an aggro deck with a spread of physical and arcane damage. You have the most spread out of all the heroes. Uh, you can go tall with arcane damage uh, because of your staff, which will allow for surge effects to happen, such as etchings of arcana to grab back your sigils. That's very, very huge. Um, and you can close out games really early. So you can uh, finish the game before a Florian or Verdance gets the second cycle. And that can be what is needed to beat those earthy heroes. The cons, you're extremely fatigable. Um, you go through your deck pretty fast, ready to use his ability or not. And uh, because you do arcane damage, uh, you can be fatigued through life gain. Uh, you need the most for a successful draft and what I mean by that is you kind of you do need quite a bit to have a good Asilio deck you need a good amount of sigils you need a good amount of go again lightning cards and then you need a good amount of wizard cards to have a the perfect hand of lightning lightning sigil wizard card that's kind of really what you're trying to do every turn uh, but it's obviously a big ass sometimes, um, especially when drafting. Um, and then you don't have a lot of natural go against. There's only Fry. Fry is your only natural go against. So you do need to draft stuff like Flash and have stuff like Flash in your hand or Flittering Charge with like an instant speed to make that work. So he, yeah, you do have to kind of get creative in order to make things work and instead of just it feeling more natural like someone like Aurora where you know she can make go again happen and it, it flows a little bit easier. All right. So I want the matchups here. So Florian, you're looking to focus on dealing arcane spells or dealing arcane damage with spells, I think is what I meant to say here. Um, attack only when arcane follows. So, so that what that means is like, because Florian does like to block so he can put earth cards in his grave so that it makes it decomposing easier. Um, try not to let him have that ability. Um, but if you do have such a really good turn uh, that you're going to be able to play two lightning cards out and then be able to amp two on your surge effect, then that sounds awesome. You should definitely do that. And that will uh, make Florian be on a timer. And even though you're attacking them, you're still dealing massive arcane damage. And that's kind of what you're trying to focus in on on this matchup. Uh, with Verdance, you're doing the same thing. You're doing the same thing because you don't really want her to have too many Earths so she can decompose early, um, but you can be explosive with her, so you'd like that. Uh, with Aurora, you're going to be racing. Uh, you know, only look to block if you have off hands or if she's presenting some sort of on hit ability. Um, she doesn't have too many, so you can, you're can probably all right there. But yeah, definitely just kind of do the mental math on it. Uh, that's what you have to do with the Lightning Heroes. It's kind of just do the mental math to see, okay, is it worth blocking or is it worth saving to come back and snap back at her with? Uh, in the mirror, try to go first uh, by Dwayne and Dyro, so do that. And then uh, try to take their macro card out. So try to take their Aria Sanctuary out by um, using an arcane damage on your turn zero. Uh, the sooner you get th that out, the the easier it is to make all your surge effects happen, and you can rely on that easier, and which can set up big turns, especially with cards like Flash into Open the Floodgates. Okay. Against Viscerai, race and look to amp up Arcane. Um, this is just to make uh, you know surge effect happens. Uh, pop the bubble can be pretty good against him if he has uh, some rune chance lying about. Uh, but yeah, you're definitely trying to just 
they they have good combinations you're trying to get good combinations so again like flash open the floodgates you know you're trying to you're trying to set up stuff like that so that because your combinations can't be blocked where his can so that's the, like the big difference so if you can get some combinations yours can't be blocked and you can win within like a matter of turns in that way and then kano is the same as vish right you just just try to race um you know, you can actually attack uh, quite a bit into both Viserai and Kano, and I think you should. So, you know, do that early and often and just try to race them. All right, let's talk about Kano, our last wizard, our secret wizard. All right, so he could be drafted as a Celio or Verdance, okay? Both are fine, all right? You get some benefits with each. So let's look at the lightning. So if you tried to play Kano with lightning cards, uh, you're going to be looking for cards that allow for two wizard spells like Flash. So Flash is going to be huge here because it allows you to play two wizard spells at once. You don't need the surge effects in order for this to happen. So this is really nice and you get that ability. Also, when you play cards like this, uh, you do get to amp up a little bit. So that also provides that opportunity. If Earth, you're looking for blue Earth cards so that when you pitch them to activate uh, Verdance's staff, you can not only get the surge effect, but you can also have a chance to get the embodiment of Earth, which is very good because your whole deck is wizard cards, which means your whole deck is not attack actions with a embodiment of Earth that can block for four. All right, you're going to look to go tall with amp spells. This is stuff like Exploding Aether. That's going to be a very good Kano card for you. But you're also going to go look wide to go wide with Surge spells, stuff like Aether Quickening and Trailblazing Aether. These are very good ways to get two arcane damage spells on them and one turn. All right, let's look at a Kano deck. This one we went with Asilio. Um, Oftentimes, when I'm finding I'm drafting Kano, I will start with a, uh, a Celia or Verdance, and it end up realizing that those that that talent is dried up and just end up being a Kano deck. So here we have mostly a Kano deck. We do have some Trip to Light Fantastics for our, our Lightning, but these are just damage prevention. We did get some fries. Fry with a Kano deck is just really a zero for three in yellow because you are going to be able to amp one. So that's pretty nice. Um, I have like a Lightning form, so that's a little odd. But for the most part, this is more of a Kano deck than it is a Celio deck. You can see we have two Flashes. That's huge. Two Aether Quickenings. That's a very good card as well. Uh, perennial Aether Blooms. It's not as important as it is in Vernon's because you're not going to get to second cycle. You're going to kill your opponent within five turns or they're going to get you within those turns. That's really how these games go. Uh, Arcane Polarity, I think, was huge, really, with the trip lights. Uh, I think I ended up facing at two Asilios, so that really helped win those games. And then, yeah, just dealing all this sort of Arcane onto them is really what you want to be at. You can see I only have two Sigil of Forethoughts. That was really just to make Twinkle Toes uh, a card that I can use. So uh, very, very wizardy, less on the lightning side. All right some of the pros you get to play exclusively almost exclusively arcane damage and that is super hard to block your opponent gets one sanctuary of aria and then that's it and after that they have to do stuff like damage prevention um, or life gain to counter your arcane damage your class cards block very well uh, particularly if you are earth and you have embodiment of earth uh, your class cards block very very well all right all your class cards block for three um, which is very good because then all you have to do is block with three cards come in with an arcane cell for three arcane damage that they can't block and then keep doing that every turn and you'll be all right you put a clock on your opponent when you're playing Kano uh, because most of the times you're not just presenting three arcane damage. Most of the times you're presenting, you know, some sort of surge effect that allows you to play another arcane damage spell or you just got really tall with your arcane damage. So most of the time you're presenting like at the minimum three, but it can get upwards of eight to even I've, un I've even done 10 before. So, uh, yeah, arcane damage, especially if it's like half their life is very very uh tough on your opponent and definitely puts a clock on them all right some of the cons uh it can definitely be tech for um life gain and prevention effects are a great way to tech against this deck uh, so this deck can have a counter to it so keep that in mind 
Um, and then it does because you are playing arcane damage. You're not allowing your opponents to block, uh, which allows them to keep four to five card hands. Now, against Earth opponents, this is totally fine because Earth opponents generally can only use about two cards, right? One to pitch, one to attack with. So that tends to work out in your favor. But against Lightning opponents or Viscerai, uh, not so much the case. Oftentimes they can use those cards in their hand and uh, really put some damage on you. So put some pressure back. And then there's only one play style to play. With all the other heroes, you can kind of adjust your play style according to how the game's going or according to what hand you got. Uh, but Kano really just looks to do one thing, which is arcane damage. So, um, you know, where that is a good thing, it can also be a bad thing. All right, so let's talk about the matchups. Four in, just get aggressive with arcane. Look to end the game quick. This is a very good matchup for you. You should be able to uh, get them before they can even turn on. That's the idea. Uh, get them before they can turn online. Uh, Verdance, same thing. You know, so another Earth hero. If you get them before they turn online, you're gonna have a great time. Uh, Aurora, you might need to play more defensively because again, she gets to keep her four to five card hands against you. So if you got a block of three cards to come with zero cost arcane spell, totally fine uh, as long as you're you know committing some damage here and there you should be able to get her um it might just be a little a little later of a game you got to play a little slower against her Acilio, uh, you're gonna block his physical attacks because that's how he's going to try to race you. You, if you are the Verdant Kano, then you get to start with more health, and that's pretty nice. But if you're the Acilio Kano, then you're gonna look to race them in Arcane. All right, so you're gonna match their Arcane damage they're presenting to you. You're gonna try to race that, uh, or at least match it. But you are going to block the physical uh, so that you can make sure you're not taking any unnecessary damage. Against Viscerai, you want to have disruptive surge effects um, in order to slow them down. Uh, this is just because they have like on hits ability. So they're going to try to force you to block. So whenever you're coming back at them, you, you really want to try to slow them down in any ways possible. Uh, but this is this is actually another tough matchup. The Aurora and Viscerai can be pretty tough for you. Um, and then the mirror, just try to go taller, maybe close out the game quicker. Uh, just do basic like math and see what works best. All right, how to practice for the drafts. Okay, every time you guys are asking me, how can we uh, do these draft games that we're seeing you play? Well, I finally have it, all right? Go on this, or look at this QR code. It'll take you to the Discord. And then there is a readme, read that. It'll allow you to figure out how to participate in drafts, and then you can start drafting there. And that is the best way to do it, because go have some fun with this. This is actually really, it turns out to be a really good draft. I'm actually really, really enjoying this draft. Um, but as always, just practice, practice, practice. The best, the best way to get better at draft is just to keep practicing um, so that hopefully you can go out there and win your gold foil. Um, or at least a cold foil for the armor. All right, guys, that is it. I thank you very, very much. Again, if you want even more, uh, you know, check out our Patreon. We got draft rankings and everything else. So if you want more from, from me, that's where I got it. Uh, but until then, keep on fabbing and good luck.